Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, April 22nd. How'd that happen? 2021. I know I say that every week. It's crazy, huh? This is the week and charts. I'm sure I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. It looks like, looks like we're getting more and more people finding the show. If you're watching a recording of this, you want to come to the shows live, ask questions live, ask about your favorite stock picks, just go to DaveLander.com on Thursdays or on any other day, go to DaveLander.com slash webinar and you can sign up for the show. And if you sign up for one show, even if the show is already passed, you'll be signed up for the next year or so. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously current market conditions, your questions on trading as usual, just hang on to your questions until we get to the slides, if they're not related to the slides, of course, and your favorite stock picks. And if you don't mind, wait till we get to the live charts for that. And that's just so I don't accidentally delete your pick and then ask about one at a time. I wanna to continue to talk about profit centers and keep in mind, this is something that I haven't fully fleshed out just yet, but I think by showing you, and, and I'm guilty of this, I, I tend to show everyone what I'm working on long before I've got it perfected. But in the process, I tend to learn a lot, and I'll show you some of that research today, or tonight, I should say. And I wanna to touch upon briefly the pitfalls of trend following. In the back of my mind, I've got an article that I'm thinking about doing at some point in time about the downside of trend following, even though I'm an avid fan, obviously, it's the only way to make money in the markets. There are some pitfalls, especially when it comes to the way I do things. Now, I think I have a superior way of doing things, but of course I try to shoot holes at it. What's the old uh, saying, be willing to kill your babies or whatever, murder your darlings. That's what it is, I think. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading as often summing up all predictions or about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. And that's from my buddy, Greg Morris. All right, let's continue to talk about, continue to talk about profit centers. Now I want to show you, tonight I want to show you Russian dolls. And I miss the mother of all setups here. And I hope, I hope, and if some of you guys caught it, you let me know, but I hope somebody caught it. So essentially what we're looking for is a pattern within a pattern, a fractal, if you will. So we take a daily setup, something on the Landry list, and usually 90% or 95% of everything I show you on the Landry list is already set up. And people email me, hey, Dave, you like this stock? It's like, it's on the Landry list. I liked it. And that's why I showed you in the first place. Anyway, so this is PLBY. And you can see it was on the Landry list on 421 it was on a long time ago we'll take a look at that in just one second too and notice it had the mother of all rallies up over nine points in one day now let's take a look at what happened intraday now on the first 15 minute bar it did begin to take off a little bit and as i'm going to show you in one second you you also want to take a look at the daily chart when you're trading these intraday patterns but again it's a pattern within a pattern so you're looking to trade a breakout or ideally, or at least a move above the prior day's high, a little bit more aggressive than a pullback. And we'll get to that in just one second. Now, on that first 15 minute bar, when I had that big rally, you have to make a go or no go type of decision. Now, ideally, and this is something I'm gonna flesh out when I get to the leverage ETFs, ideally you want to go in and try to not hop in on the first 15 minute bar as i said a while back not to beat to that horse but my s p futures trading i was getting chewed up chewed up chewed up chewed up and then one day i didn't get a trade until i forget when it was but it was like an hour before the close it's like oh this market is chopping around all day and i finally had a trade i made money next day didn't have a trade for quite a long time and then I made money and then the next day it's like i forget exactly how it goes if you go back and look at the prior recordings you're like this guy's just making it up no it it it, it, some, it unfolded in a certain way i don't remember exactly how but i know there were a couple of mornings where i didn't take the first little push and then i realized that i had accidentally changed my charts from a five minute chart to a 15 minute chart and my life got a lot better so this is a 15 minute chart so if you are thinking about going in intraday on something, and I use the term intraday because I don't want to use the word term day trading. We're not in and out, in and out, in and out. We want to 
get into a position on an intraday of aces and hold on to it for as long as possible. And keep in mind, this is an ancillary technique. This is something that we're looking to, to do to add a little money to the core methodology. Like a day like, when was that day? 420, I think. The uh, market was acting like it was on 420. We had a bit of a sell-off and then the positions got absolutely annihilated. And I ended up having a decent day on the intraday stuff, not enough to make up for what I lost, but it was nice to have that money come in free and clear. Now, of course, as I've said before, you got to be careful with this because sometimes you can add insult to injury. Like today, I lost money on the intraday stuff and I also lost money on the position trades. But anyway, getting back to playing something like this. You've got to be careful not to get too excited on that first 15 minute bar. Now, people say, well, why don't you just wait till the first 15 minutes? I think if you're newer to trading and you and or you lack disciplined, then by all means, wait for that first 15 minute bar. And if you miss the mother of all moves, you miss the mother of all moves. If you are a little bit more seasoned, then realize that you might have to make that go or no go decision, meaning you might have to jump in. And as I'm going to say in a few minutes, I keep getting ahead of myself you might buy that exact high tick of the day, okay? Or on a, especially on these no-go no, no go type of decisions. So no-go no go means early, early, early in the morning, you have to make a quick decision on whether or not to take the trade. Now, the most beautiful thing that can happen is the stock opens and it might rally a little bit, not enough to fake you in, implodes, and then he's like, aha, okay, so... Now I'm going to put my entry above that high. And if I get triggered, I get triggered. If I don't, I don't. So this thing ran nine points and it was up about eight points or so when I first got around to looking at it. Now, this is kind of ironic. And when I'm finished, you might think, don't you think? But what's ironic is I warned of the perils of these ancillary trades, these profit centers is that they could take you away from the big prize, okay? So this is the case where a profit center, I was so busy looking at those ETFs, I forgot to look at my Landry list to see if there was any Russian dolls until it was too late. And I just couldn't stand it. So late, late, late in the day, I played, played it for a point or so. I'm not very proud of that. In fact, the reason I put a question mark is it's like, should I have caved in and bought it? Was this just FOMO? I guess the answer is, is probably. So let me know what you think on that. Now, if you were to come in and you're not taking a position trade, you just want to take an intraday trade off of something that's set up for a reversion to the mean type of move, a possible resumption of the longer term trend, something like this one. Coming in, we just look at the intraday chart to help avoid that go or no go decision. What you might do is put your entry in lower than you would for a core position trade. And if you want to get a, get a feel for my entries, and usually they're pretty liberal, go in and watch the archives, daylander.com slash archives, as many as you can stand. And I would start with the most current and work my way back a year or two to get a feel for things. And I think we had a pretty good last year or two, especially since we played both sides of the market. We played the down side back when the market imploded. We were long going in. We had some nice longs going into the to the pandemic. And then we shorted. And then as things begin to rise and as we begin begun to get setups, we began getting long again. But anyway, an aggressive entry would probably be around right there. Uh, or I'm sorry, a, an entry for something like a position trade would probably be up here somewhere, let's say around 41. An entry for a Russian doll type of intraday trade that's not too aggressive, maybe around 38. And if you want to get even more aggressive, put an entry right above that high. Even better, watch to see if it fakes out above that high and comes back in. And then it's like, aha, now that first fake out, I did not get sucked in. And believe me, every now and then you will. And I don't want to make it sound like you won't. Then you can put your entry again above that high and go about your life. And you can see we had the mother of all trades in this one. Now, getting back to like the intra intraday trading is, if I don't watch myself, I'll stand there all day and watch a screen. And that's why I refuse to put my trading desk at 
normal desk height. I, I make it a stand only desk. I say I make it a stand only desk. It's stand only right now, and I'm making a desk that's going to be stand only also. And that's going to keep me from just sitting down and watching a stupid screen all day long. What you could do is you could set stops to stop you into positions and set alerts to alert you when something might need to be done. I know I'm guilty as everyone else. I try not to watch too watch too much, but I probably watch it way too much. Now let's talk about the intraday leverage shares and with an RS plus a pattern. Now for the RS, all I'm doing, and you could do this with Think or Swim, you could do it with Telecharts, you could also do it with like a free app. And, and as I've said ad nauseum. One of my clients made a lot of money trading in Landry lists when things are hot, okay? So like, if you could imagine, if you'd have caught that one nine point move out of the half a dozen stocks made in a Landry list yesterday, that would have been a really good thing to do. And if you were watching your relative strength, your intraday relative strength, or day over day, I guess is how it works, biggest percent changes for the day, sort, sort your watch list by percent change, then you would have, caught that move. And by the way, doing this, and actually I missed one. Obviously I missed the, the Playboy going up nine points, but that reminded me to put a watch list of the Landry list, even though I've had them in the past, but to make sure I set that up every day. And not only set it up, sort it by RS. And I've done this in the past. I don't know why I haven't done it lately. It's just a lot going on. But yeah, I need to remind myself to do some of these things. I was telling one client, I was like, hey, uh, I'm going to pay somebody to watch a Landry list. And he goes, you don't need to do that. He goes, take one of those eight monitors. I got four divided by two, so it comes out, or four times two, which gives you eight. Take one of those eight monitors and dedicate a Landry list. And it's like, yeah, I know, you're right, you're right. But I'm still setting all that up, but he's right. Anyway, so JNUG on the 21st, Initially, it could have been a go or no-go decision, and then it began to break out out of that big, wide opening range. So I went ahead and bought it on that range, and it just, it really, really, really took off. And then within 30 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes, I was able to get half of the profits off. And then for the rest of the day, it didn't do a whole lot, but it did rally a little bit by the close, and then I exited the rest of the position market on close. So you can see in a case like this, there was one order to get in. And at that particular time, I placed an order to sell half and another order for market on close. I had canceled my trailing stop order. So one order to get in. And if that's triggered, you put in a, a trailing stop for half, a limit for half. If it hits the limit, there's nothing to do for the rest of the day. I know, ha ha. But you really don't have to sit there and watch this all day, especially once it hits that initial profit target. And then, of course, right before the close, I have a little alarm that goes off to remind me to get out of anything that I want to get out of. So that was JNUG the other day. Now, a couple of thoughts on this, and I kind of was thinking about this all day long when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about tonight. You want to focus on the strongest lever shares based on a one day percent change. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but the, the 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 client that was using he was using a free app like CNBC app or something like that on his phone. But Thinkorswim has it. I think uh, I know that uh, Stock Charts has it in their ACP platform. So plenty of ways to get this percent change. Just throw whatever lever shares you want to watch in there. And the great thing about it is, like. Everyone else out there, I'm imagining, I get a little bullish at times. I get a little bearish at times. Bearish, my, my Cajun just slipped out. I get a little bearish at times. And if I go in and I'm watching this relative strength list, even though I won't, might want to be, even though I'm bearish, I might want to buy the S shares, okay, the short shares, I might look at that long share, like that J Nug, okay, that up share. And if it's at the top relative strength and it just stays there, stays there, stays there, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one in my face, then I'm like, you know, even though I might be a little bearish, this thing is just going up, going up, going up. I might have to close my eyes and buy. And even though I've only been doing this for a short period of time, only like three days, seriously, I find that it really gives me a good feel for things, especially as I'm going to show you in one minute, 
if you're paying attention to the S&P 500. Now, here's the thing. You can't just blindly buy the ones that are at the top or near the top of the list, and I'll show you why in just one second. You do want to look for some sort of breakout. So the reason I, I call it RS plus pattern is relative strength. We're not using an indicator. We're just using the strength of the stock compared to others, relative to others. That's the relative strength, not RSI or something like that. And again, we're just sorting by the percent change in the, in the watch list. So once you do see some ones at the top, you need to look at the range. Are they trade, trading in a narrow range? What's the market doing? As I'm going to kind of beat the dead horse on in a minute. If the market's in a narrow inside day, the overall market that is, let's say the spiders are within an inside day, then you may not want to hop on these relative, these leverage shares that are relative strength basis. You might want to watch for some sort of significant breakout. Now, you got to work really hard to avoid a fake out. And I was pretty excited because over the last week or two, I missed quite a few fake outs, but I did get nailed like to the penny on a couple. So let's say you've got a bar that, that runs up and let's say it stops at 12, okay? And begins to come in a little bit and you're thinking, okay, well, if it breaks above, let's say 12, 20 or 12 10 i guess for a, a, a triple leverage inverted share or whatever it is then you're like okay then it might be a bona fide trend well it might just go to 12 10 and come right back in it happens spelled with a silent sh now as i alluded to a few minutes ago you kind of want to sit on your hands during the first 15 minutes unless it truly is a go or no go decision sometimes Markets come out the gate and they rally, 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 and they don't look back. That's the hardest trade to make because you're buying as this thing is just going kind of straight up. And you know, in the back of your head, you could get faked out. And believe me, you will sooner or later. But what if that market runs up, let's say, like that PLBY? What if that thing ran at nine points on the first 15 minutes, 15 minute bars, and then began to implode? It can happen. Okay. So anyone who says, unless they've got some kind of specific methodology, maybe a reversion to the mean type of methodology they're doing intraday, where they just ignore the first 15 minutes of trading for whatever reason, maybe that helps them avoid a fake out. But if you're trading trends, intraday trends, you got to be willing to get in at any point in time. And sometimes even late in the day. And um, I, as I was looking at some of these intraday S&P charts, specifically the spiders, I saw some late day moves and I was wondering why I didn't catch them. It's probably because I wasn't paying attention late in the day or even better, the way to catch them. If you do want to catch them, you don't have to pay attention. Just put in maybe an order above the high for the day and then you'll trigger in if you get a late day trigger. But anyway, getting back to the first 15 minutes, try to sit on your hands unless again, it's a go or no go decision. Now, here's something that's really important, and it's a pretty amazing concept. And I've said this before, I don't know whatever happened to the gentleman, but back way back in the trading markets days, we approached somebody who had a, a Delta relative strength software program, and Delta means change, right? So if something's rising up the ranks and we wanted, or at least, the the powers that be at trading markets wanted the this software program on the website and, and we never could negotiate with the guy um you know for some strange reason he wanted to get paid for his software but that's another story altogether <laughs> that was before the give everything away for free and make it up in volume but before i get myself in trouble it was a really neat thing that he was doing and i've always thought about that and I guess one way to think about Delta relative strength is it's like, uh, how cold is it outside? Uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Damn, that's cold. And, you know, the person you just asked says, well, that's nothing. It was it was zero degrees Fahrenheit about an hour ago before the sun came up. So it's like, ah, OK, so it's cold, but it's getting better. Right. And so you've got something at the bottom of the list and it starts working its way up. If you had some sort of software like this gentleman had many years ago with the Delta relative strength. Maybe somebody could Google that and see if he's still around and see if we could figure out what he's doing. 
and uh, learn from him, you know, but but there's definitely something there when they begin to kind of bubble up through the list. I guess that's a good way of putting it. Kind of like a bubble sort. That's my old computer science days coming out. You want to pay attention to the overall market, and I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. Don't fight it unless the ETF is truly defining gravity. So you got a little tiny inside day in the S&Ps, and you see something that's really, really, really moving, okay? Like today, uh, was it Lab D or Lab U, or was it yesterday? Lab U today, I think, just went up and up and up and up and up. Even when the market weakened, it just was, it, it remained strong. Now, WRB days are the holy grail, okay? If I could figure out when to only trade on WRB days, wide range bar days, you'd never see my fat ass again. <laughs> I'm half kidding. I would come back and taunt you a second time. And I'm working on that, but I haven't quite figured it out. But I know that if you're getting chewed up, chewed up, chewed up day after day after day, you might just want to sit on your hands a little bit and let things begin to expand a little bit. And historical volatility might be something to look at. And we've done that quite a bit in the past. And then I went off on that rabbit hole, I don't know exactly when, maybe last year. And I felt like I made a little bit of progress. And one of the things I did was, I call it a Holy Grail day. A Holy Grail day starts at one end and ends at the other. And I'll show you those one of those in just one second. But one thing I did do was I created an indicator that counted the number of days since you had a Holy Grail day. It's not a perfect indicator, but it does tell you when you're due for a Holy Grail day to occur, and that'll make sense in just one second. Now you gotta be careful not to chase your own tail. Today I chased my own tail. I'm absolutely exhausted because I was, I was, it was Jackie, it was a Jackie Mason market, and I wasted a lot of stress. And I, and I preach about too much trading, and it's gonna wear you down and wear you out. And here I am today. I did too much damn trade. Okay. I didn't lose my ass, but I was down a little today. It is frustrating, okay? So some days you just have to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> now, FNGD was kind of interesting. It was number one on the RS list nearly, or I'd say for all morning or much of the day. I wish it was a way to kind of record those and so we could see where they are or when they are, but maybe I'll figure out a way to do that. But the point I want to make, as I said earlier, is don't just blindly buy what's number one on the list because this thing gapped higher and that put it in the number one day over day change, okay, percent change for the day column. But then look what happens, okay? It does rally up a little bit, which could have made you think, okay, this could be a go or no go decision. But if you could kind of hang on and only really, really, really take it if you really think it's going to continue to blast higher and try to withstand that first 15 minutes. And again, I don't want to make it sound like you you never take a trade in the first 15 minutes. I've got to preach that because somebody is going to watch a part of this presentation and they're going to email me. I'll probably get four emails, okay? And they're going to say, I thought you said not to trade the first 15 minutes. And I guarantee you I'm going to get those emails. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you want to make darn sure you really think you've got something. And then you can see what happens. It just it just died out. It died for the rest of the day. And it stayed, if memory serves, it stayed number one on the list for a long time. And probably up until, let's say, 11 o'clock Eastern before it began to implode. And then, of course, it dropped down the list. And remember, I just talked about delta relative strength. Well, that would be like, Delta relative strength, delta negative relative strength, as it's dropping and dropping and dropping, something's wrong, okay? Yeah, keep the questions coming. I'll get to those. And you can see big blue arrow on the way down. One of my big problems is I chase my tail sometimes when the market appears to just be in like a little bit of a narrow range. I'm so excited to catch the mother of all trends, okay? Like I said a while back, we I'm, I want to do like the, the mother of all backyards, and I want my trading account to pay for it. Well, you know, Jesse Livermore said, there's is that a chap on Wall Street, I forget how he said it, that didn't go broke trying to pay for a bracelet or whatever they bought back then, a railroad car or whatever. 
But Peter Brandt once said something. He said it in New Market was it made a lot of sense. He said, don't lose 30 cents in a 10 cent market. And he's referring to commodities, obviously, where 10 cents is not that big of a move, but 30 cents would be. And if, the, if it's just moving around 10 cent range, don't go in and out, in and out and lose 30 cents, okay? Now, I thought it'd be kind of cool, and I did this last minute, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to go in and take a look at the spiders over the past several days. And I think I began the relative strength watch on the 19th with the ETFs, but I didn't get my Landry list up until I think today or yesterday. But I'm gonna stay on top of that. I mean, someday I need to form out all this stuff. And, and you, you watch the relative strength on the ETFs. You watch the relative strength on the uh, Landry list. Set some alarms and stuff. Let's go about our lives, but uh, just kind of keep a loose eye on these things. So anyway, I think I began a relative strength watch on the ETFs a few days ago. And the market sold off fairly hard then chopped around going into the close. And it bounced a little bit on April 19th. Now I went in and grabbed the spreadsheet for my performance on that day and I had an okay day, okay? And then on the 20th, I had a pretty good day. It was great, okay? Well, the market had a little bit of fake out. See this little fake out right here, okay? But it's not a tremendous fake out. Gap's lower, looks like it's gonna be a bit of an opening gap reversal, rallies up, and it's hard. But you gotta like, okay, is this thing really gonna head higher? And then nope, it begins to implode, okay? So if you're watching this and you could with, you, you don't get sucked in, I guarantee you, you're looking at that RS list, all of a sudden on this big bar down, all of those S shares, the short shares, are gonna bubble up, okay? Uh, John, so when I get to your question, are you talking about with IPOs or are you talking about with, uh, in general? I guess it's IPOs with IPO pattern. I'll get to that in one second. So take a look at the 21st. The markets rallied all day, okay? Now, take a look at the first 15 minute, more, minute bar. That's kind of a go or no go decision, right? Now, if you did miss, and in this particular case, came back in and then took off, it's like, aha, okay, maybe the up move, maybe the up move is the move for the day. We'll see, okay? But that was a wide range bar move up, and that's a wonderful pattern. Now, today was all over the place, and again, I lost money. It looked like the market was trying to rally. It looked like the market was trying to rally and then and imploded. Not to confuse the issue with facts, but it was, was it, why did it implode? Goldman Sachs said something, or I don't know what happened, but I am curious. So today was very frustrating, and like I said, I'm exhausted. I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Why did I chase my own tail today fighting this thing? trying so hard to get on the right side of the market. Now, I did go in real quick and I grabbed a few of the days. And on this particular day, the market opened kind of flat to down, and then it began to sell off, and then it went up, and then it went down, and then it went up. It was a Jackie Mason market. I went in and grabbed my trades and I did lose money on that day. On this day here, I lost some money. I don't know if it was my ego fighting the market. I need to go in and look at my trading journal and see what I wrote down. And one thing that does help is, is I, I have someone that I speak with a lot during the day. And, uh, you know, he kind of points things out. He's like, you know, because I'll say like, oh, man, I lost my ass on those inverted shares. Like, well, you have been kind of bearish lately. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right, you know. Now, on this day here, I ended up negative. I don't know why. I don't know. I guess that chop faked me out and then I gave up. And then late in the day, we had a nice little move lower. So there's something I'm working on. It's a work in progress, but it works much better when the market is making a nice wide range bar. So let's just go back a little bit in time. This is a spiders. Looked like it was pretty good on a 26th, eh, 29th, kind of almost an inside bar. Not so good. On the 30th was definitely an inside bar, not too good. On that day there, hard to tell what happened intraday, but not much range. Now the following day looked pretty good. It looks like a gap and go. And then look at that next day. That's a holy grail day. Gaps higher, doesn't really dip much, and then it closes on its high. It looks like it, it 
had a pretty decent rally. I don't know what it did intraday, but it certainly started at one end and the other. Here's my problem. Admittedly, I come in and trade a day like this and a day like this, just like I did the last few days, okay? I come in and, and I'm feeling really good, and then I'm all excited. I get a little too aggressive, and then I got to deal with a couple of days like this, okay? Another bad day there. Now, look, that's a pretty good day, okay? Now, if anything, I'm kind of seeing this as I go, and I've know, I know it happens. You know, that's the thing with Holy Grail days. If you do catch one, the chances of catching another one tomorrow can happen, but in general, probably won't. And if you caught two or three of them recently, you might, you might need to sit on your hands a little bit. And it's counterintuitive because, boy, it feels good. And you're making money and you want to press a little bit and you start pressing and you end up with a day like this and then you're hating life. So just you can kind of see here, these are a couple, couple days in there, not so good. That was an okay day going up and then, you know, a couple of choppy days looks like this was an okay day down. And then that one right there was what, yesterday? That was the mother of all up days. I did really well on that day. And then today... It looks like it would be pretty good, but today was kind of all over the place. It, it has the appearance that it should have been okay, though. Now, it's in perfect hindsight, okay? In perfect hindsight, it's a holy grail day. It starts near the top of the range, doesn't rally a whole lot. It comes back down, but there were a lot of fake outs and check us along the way. So I just don't want to make this look like it's easy. I mean, like if I came in yesterday, you know, I did this presentation, I'd have showed you six out of seven winning trades with these etfs and i'm like look it's it's easy but today i got chewed up a little bit you know got my ass handed to me so anyway let's okay let's take a look at these questions before i shift gears okay um so john says does the buy b work with 15 minute bars okay well, the buy it b my discovery there was based on daily bars and my thinking was, if an IPO is going to go from, let's say, 8 to 20, okay, and let's say it comes public around 9, drops down a little bit or whatever, and closes at 10, right, it's going to have to pass through 10 along the way or 9 along the way, wherever the new closing high is. And I'm like, okay, this is wild and crazy. Let me just spitball here. What would happen if I just bought that new closing high? And I'll be damned, it worked. <laughs> Not all the time, but it actually worked good enough to where, and I know I've said this a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand more. I, I put my IPO course out there and somebody was on a trading service, quit the trading service. I'm like, why'd you quit? We're doing great. I'm like, oh man, I'm making so much money in IPOs. I don't need no trading service. I'm like, yeah, but it won't always be that good. So it's the only time I've, I've done something that actually hurt my business. But I guess it's kind of a win-win. Because it's a positive. <coughs> Excuse me, went down the wrong way. <coughs> Talk among yourselves. <coughs> I'm glad. <coughs> I'm glad this isn't 420 day. You guys be wondering what the hell. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, would the buy a B work in a 15-minute bar? And I asked him to flesh that out a little bit. He says, no. I was thinking of using something like the buy a B to help time your entries on intraday trades. Like the open at 15-minute bar would be number one. <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of number of days, using 15-minute bars, thinking out loud. Um, well, that's kind of a breakout characteristic, and that's sort of what we're doing with the intraday stuff, with the leverage shares is we are looking for that breakout characteristic. So we are trading a breakout intraday. I'm not a huge fan of breakouts because of all the, the problems that are associated with them. More often than not, they don't work. But with a 15 minute bar, I don't. I wouldn't see it kind of like a, as a buy at B. Um, I don't know, we, we'll have to flesh that out a little further. So you're saying that it would have to close, the close of the 15 minute bar, I guess you'd have to figure out a way to time that and say, okay, if it closes, above the x bar high then you go in but it's fluid because it's intraday whereas on the on the close of the trading day everybody has made their decisions okay and then one thing i found with the buy b is 
and I've actually made a little money doing this in the past, and you go in and watch the presentation, I'll sh uh, I've shown what it works, is that not only do people buy all the way into that close, like we do with the buy at B, but people actually will do a little follow through buying with some of these IPOs. And when I see that it's up a point or so in after hours trading just for SGs, I'll throw in a crazy order well above the market. And to my surprise, I'll be doing a little presentation or doing whatever at night, finishing up my nightly analysis. And all of a sudden, I hear like a zing. And I'm like, what the hell was that? You know, how could I get stopped on something in after hours? And then I realized that that limit order got hit. Okay. Not all the time, but every now and then it happens. How important do you rate the outside bar day? Example, the SPY today. Well, today wasn't a huge outside uh, bar day, but we'll take a look at that in one second. But outside bar day is a pretty negative thing because it traps people on the upside and then it kind of spits them out. Or if they're not spit out yet, they're going to sell off. And one of my ex neighbors has a very substantial amount of money he wants to put into the market. I haven't heard from him in years. And then all of a sudden, out of blue, I get a text. I saw like Jackie Mason. I don't know why. Maybe because I was talking about Jackie Mason market earlier. Anyway, I'm a little nervous. It's a fat lady, lady singing, and I've been kind of taking my time, not not on purpose. I've just been busy. And and if you haven't heard from me in a while, and you're waiting for an answer on something, it's just because I've been busy, and I'm just trying to get to everyone as soon as I can. And so I told him, I was like, look, I haven't forgotten about you. It's just the market's going down, so I don't see any really hurry to do anything and then lo and behold the market makes the outside day down today well i didn't know it at the time it's it's rallying big time i'm like oh boy he's gonna kill me because the market's going up and he's not in and then by the end of the day it's down so i got to thinking what would have happened with him or anyone else who has got a little fomo going on and they finally just throw in a towel and the market's making the new high and then all of a sudden they get spit out so Always think in terms of the psychology of the market participants and also think in terms of your own psychology and what you're thinking. Because I'm thinking like, oh, boy, here we go again. This thing's going to the moon. And then what happened? It came right back in. So we'll talk about that in one second. But definitely there's something to pay attention to. Now, as I said earlier, one thing I've been thinking about is the downside of trend following. And I'm going to frame this in relationship to my methodology. There's a, there's a lot of caveats and pitfalls when it comes to longer term trend following. But as you know, we're using a hybrid approach, meaning that we're trading for both short term and longer term gains. Now, one of the downsides of the trend following is catching the all too occasional outlier is key. And as I say, I think every week, we, we will be doing fantastic at the trading service. We'll have two big winners, you know, a couple of stinkers here and there, and then a couple of mediocre stocks that are breaking even or maybe just losing a little. And of course, somebody will quit the service and I'll say, okay, you know, thanks for trying out. I appreciate it, really do. Why'd you quit? And they're like, I can't make any money. It's like, well, did you get this big winner or that big winner, you know, this one was up 500%. It's not there now, but it's four and seven percent. Did you get this other one over here? Like, no, but I took those turds. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. And if you miss an occasional outlier, it really can mess up your performance. Now, getting back to the PLBY, if we go back to March 30th, which was published March 29th, the Landry list is for the following trading days for the 30th, okay? So this was my list on that particular day. And you can see there it was. Oh, by the way, here's here's like a big winner. Like this is up 400% in change, okay? And then uh, this, one's, this one's okay, it's up 60%. This one's okay, it's up 45%. You know, and then somebody will quit. I'm like, why'd you quit? Couldn't make any money. I lost my ass in GH, I lost my ass in Zim. Zim's actually positive now, by the way. Anyway, but that's a good example right there. I didn't point it. Well, you can see me point to the screen now. So it was on the list and the thing, let's see, let me find the, oh, I'm missing my chart. Let's see if it's in here. Oh, dang. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it, but that, that PLBY, we could pull it up live. 
the the point I wanted to make with that one was that it ran up like 50% without me over a fairly short period of time. So let's take a look at that. And then I don't know, my slide must have got, must have fat fingered it before the show. So anyway, PLBY back here, March 30th, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setup. Back to chart out. I have to show this one again next week. Okay. So let's see if I can get a little bit more in here. So it was a pretty cool setup. And I do remember coming close to putting it in as an official recommendation. And then look what happened since. Now, I don't want to be like the fish that got away, but I'm mad at myself for not noticing it. Not, not if maybe if I was, had that little relative strain scan set up, I've had it set up in the past. It's worked to set it up every day, but maybe on the 30th or 31st, whatever day that was, I would have caught that. And said, hey, well, maybe I need to pay attention to this particular stock. But this one stock, and I don't know, and again, I don't know what happened to my slide, but I did the did the math on it. And it would you would have made about fourteen thousand dollars in hope and maybe in counting on this particular position. And even if you got stopped out, you still would have made a significant amount of money. And that's on a hypothetical 100 k account. So that's a pretty big move. That's 14%, okay? We keep it 100 k round numbers to make the math easy. But if you make 14% on a trade, that's really going to help. Okay, Europe, very strong despite terrible infection numbers. That must have been uh, my question earlier, what happened? Resources and soft commodities or low infection rate makes it... Uh, Aussie market attractive for now. Okay. Well, Laura took off, so we don't know what he's saying there. We'll have to ask him when he comes back. All right, let's take a look at the market real quick. You guys want to start asking about, and girls want to start asking about individual stock questions. Feel free to do so now. S&P did a, did a, a 180 reversal. Okay. Now, last night, I remember saying in the service, oh boy, it's a really good day. Things really look good. We're almost to all-time highs but continue to take things one day at a time as I often preach. And we had this bit of a do over today. Now this is not the end of the world. We're still in a pretty decent uptrend. Let's throw the bow ties in. And you can see bow tie proper order, pretty darn good here. We had a little chop around here, but went back to proper order. So, so far so good, doing really well. We really never did go below the 30 EMA much, okay? We intersected it a couple times. I think we had one bar of negative Landry light right there, but the rest has been positive for this whole trip higher. Now, the question on outside bars, there's nothing that I've quantified here, and this really I wouldn't call an outside bar down. You really want to see like the mother of all wide range bars. I bet if we went back to pandemic times, we could find some big wide range bars down. It reminds me of uh, in medieval times, there were no forks and knives. So you mean to tell me in medieval time, there was Pepsi? <laughs> Look, dude, I'm just trying to work here, right? Okay, here's one. I had to go way back in time, but see that there, I feel like tiny O. Look at look, look at that outside bar, it's huge. So if you see a bar like that, especially near all time highs, I think that's significant, okay? If it just kind of matches up with the prior bar, like the one we had today, I wouldn't get too excited about that. Um, outside bar up back here, okay, nice fat bar like that one. That's probably a good thing, although it did take a few days to get going. But that's concerning when you see such a, especially because it gapped higher, faked everybody out. Hey, this thing's going to the moon. I got all that money I've been sitting on for 10 years because I, 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 I don't believe in the stock market. But you know what? I'm a believer now. And then you can see it imploded. So I wouldn't put I wouldn't put too much credence in, in one bar, but it certainly helps to paint the picture. Okay. So you get an outside bar down, you're like, okay, I better be careful here, outside bar down. Then you get like a gap down, a wide range bar down the next day. It's like, okay, well, we might have a trend developing. Might want to put those moving averages in. Let's see where they are. Have we tagged the 30? EMA, have we survived or can we survive the 30? Did it survive the 30? And then go from there. Let's take a look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ's a bit of a bummer because 
it looked like yesterday it was going to try to rally and go out and take out the prior highs. I've been talking for days about my concern about a potential double top, going and watch last week's Dave Landry's weekend chart, if you don't believe me. And then we had a big day yesterday. It looks like it was the all clear, and then we faked out today. Still looks okay, but I would watch this prior peak in here, and if we have trouble getting through it, I would be a little concerned. The rusty is just sideways, okay? As I said in tonight's service, yeah, we're below the moving averages, but they're so tight, and this thing is just sideways. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get excited if it's above the moving average tomorrow or below the moving average tomorrow. But if you see it break away and have daylight, okay, and this is kind of cool. We'll have to look at the ACP indicator on this or meta stock. ACP would probably be easier, but you, you had daylight all the way up into here, okay? What's amazing is how daylight, something as simple as that, or Landry light, I, I've got to remember to call it Landry light, will keep you on the right side of the market. Let's take a look at some sectors. Now, energy's kind of flat filling here, but now they're breaking down a little bit. So I would watch yesterday's low, okay? Now, if we drop down here somewhere, anybody who bought above, let's say 925, we get down here somewhere, is going to be a hurt and pop, and they might be looking to get out of break even. In other words, potential overhead supply. Metals and mining, nice little breakout recently, nice little rally yesterday, inside day today. I wouldn't get too excited here just yet, but if we drop below the 30, which is also, lo and behold, that would put us back below the breakout levels, then I would begin to get concerned. Gold is kind of beginning to get his act together in here, okay? So I find this kind of interesting. It's still kind of wide and loose, but it is beginning to improve. With gold and any other commodity-related stock, I prefer them coming off of like 10-year lows or multi-year lows as opposed to coming off of these high-level lows, so to speak. But it's definitely improving. And if we start seeing some gold stocks that look good, we're going to go after them. Silver tends to be more choppy than gold. As you can see, it's all over the place. Nothing to really gleam there. One thing I was looking at tonight is banks, which have been really, really strong, are beginning to wane in here a little bit, okay? So on a relative strength basis, I bet if you were measuring some sort of, let's say we went back here, and this is relative strength, by the way, okay? So it's up 16%. So banks at 16% over that short period of time since February, that's a bank, right? would be pretty exciting and it would look pretty strong. But like Janet once asked, showing my age, <laughs> what have you done for me lately? So let's go back a month and change and we're down almost 4%, okay? So the Delta relative strength on this is coming off, okay? And if you don't understand all that, just look at the moving averages. We're back below the moving average, not the end of the world, kind of flat so like I said, but if we drop much further, these are going to cross over. We're going to bow tie to the downside. They could be in trouble. Now, drugs are kind of interesting. Believe in what you say and not – believe in what you see and not in what you believe, okay? And this is especially true in biotech, but I thought the drugs were kind of rolling over too. And what did they do? They went straight back up. They don't care what I think, okay? And that's kind of the interesting thing on a micro level. And there's, there's two thoughts. One is don't chase your own tail, like I just said. But the second thought is by watching the relative strength every day, it's I bet I'm going to get a feel longer term for what's really working and what's not and what's kind of a contra trend, inter trend, inter, interday, intraday trade and what's kind of a go with the flow trade by watching those intraday relative strengths on those direction shares or whatever they call them now biotech i was pretty bearish on biotech for a while and rightfully so first thrust down nice sell off out of that bounce back into the moving averages turn right back down but now we're getting to chop chop back and forth i wouldn't run, run out and buy biotech right now but it does seem to be improving especially from where it was health services to the moon that's a tiny elvis trend look at that trend it's huge Okay, look at them, bow tie moving averages, 10, greater than 20, greater than 30. Looking pretty darn good. A little bit of a flat day today, but so far, so good there. One or two more, and then we'll uh, start looking at your stocks. 
Retail, selling off fairly hard today. It could actually pull back quite a bit. I'm, this is another one that, that fooled me, okay? Pretty bearish back here, rightfully so. Look at the sell-off out of that bow tie. That was huge, okay? But then it just promptly turned right back around, plowed through this overhead supply. Now it's at brand new highs and then pulling back, of course. So this still looks pretty good. This could actually use quite a, quite a bit more, quite a bit more of a pullback. I think my tongue is just getting stuck in my mouth. Granny's kind of hanging there at high levels. Longer term uptrend still intact. 30 day EMA, I think it's a great reference point here. Pay attention to potential bow ties, should begin to roll over. Same holds true for pretty much everything, right? Simis came up, potential double top in the works. Ugly day today. Yesterday looked pretty good. Okay. It looked, yesterday it looked like we're going to brand new highs. There's nothing to worry about. Well, today we're back down almost to the 30. And the moving averages, as you can see, are trying to come together. If we drop below the 30, then they definitely will come together. They will cross over. They have to. It's math. Okay. But as I often say, take things one day at a time. I said it with 10 times tonight. So if they go right back up, then they go right back up. Let's take a look at bonds real quick and then we'll jump into the charts. Bonds are trying to bottom out in here. Bonds up, rates down. So that's kind of interesting because we've been in a falling rate environment for quite a while, but now bonds are beginning to rally a little bit. Now I wouldn't rush out and buy bonds just yet. It looks like the big trend so far is still down. Let's take a little weekly chart, okay? So it's good, especially when you're dealing with something like uh, something macro, like interest rates. Where are interest rates headed? I think they're still headed lower. I mean, I'm sorry, higher. Bonds down, rates up. Now. Speaking of rates and interests and inflation and stuff, take a look at wood. I noticed Charlie Kirk had this. I never heard of it until last week. It's a little bit on the thin side, but it does give you a good idea of what's going on. And my wife is sort of in the real estate business on a kind of an ancillary way. She's a notary and she does closings. And she was telling me the price of wood and that, you know, what, what, it, what it relates to and the cost of the houses that they're selling, it's pretty amazing. And if you have time, go look at uh, lumber on stockcharts.com and it's pretty amazing. Now, a few weeks back, or a few months back, somebody said, uh, we were talking about lumber and this gentleman said, uh, it's going up forever. It's gonna go up forever. I'm like, thought to myself, no, it won't, Danny. <laughs> no, you don't, Danny. <laughs> anyway, so I think that's. It, it looks like a, a almost a shot is going across the bow, at least based on these uh, S&P Global Timber and Forestry Index ETF. You could see it looks like it looks pretty darn good looking trend, right? Landry light almost the whole way, a little little tag of the moving average here and here, but for the most part, pretty much straight up, a little kiss maybe right there. Now, it could pull back quite a bit and still be in an uptrend, but we'll have to pay attention to this. And then also, as time allows, take a look at the lumber contracts, look at continuous, but also look at futures, look at the closer dated ones to see if there's a squeeze going on, and then look at the further out dated ones. Now, I haven't done all that type of analysis. If somebody really has the time and, and the interest, maybe there's something with a spread. Not not that you want to trade it, but maybe pay attention to the spread because I'm wondering if, if we could have a short-term bubble and the longer-term future markets are going to reflect the fact that it's not going to be a bubble forever. So that could be a little fodder for research. All right. Any individual stock picks? Have we covered them all in Facebook lately? Anything you want to take a look at? Quite bunch tonight. Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, bring it up in Facebook. If you're not in the Facebook group, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment down below. I read every single comment and I answer every one that needs to be answered. If you're if you're trying to get me to go to, well, never mind. I shouldn't say. <laughs> 
I sound like someone, huh? Wow. That's a, anyway, you know, you know what I mean. All right, George. George has a great show. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. If we don't speak between now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much.